ever since the dawn of civilization there was trade and commerce in between civilizations for them to progress even today we find that different countries trade with one another for commodities that they don't possess even in older times that was the case so when people used to go to the marketplace in order to buy commodities they had to know how much of that particular commodity they were purchasing so as you can see over here in this market somebody is buying chickens somebody wants to buy vegetables now in order to find out what is the mass of the chickens that has been bought or what is the mass of vegetables bought what used to be the standard unit for measurement because as i have told you in earlier days there was no fixed instrument with which people could measure nor was there any unit so in earlier days people used trivial units of measurements like stones or grains so let's say somebody has bought chickens from the market and he or she wants to find out how much is the mass of all the chickens taken together so in that case it was usually measured in number of stones or amount of grains and seeds now obviously if this unit of measurement is used it is very easy to cheat someone because these sizes of grains seeds and stones will never be fixed and obviously it becomes very easy for a merchant to trick a buyer in this way so in order to avoid any sort of trickery or deceit there needed to be some sort of standard and some sort of instrument by which the mass of a particular item could be measured this led to the discovery and invention of a physical balance now the physical balance is an instrument with the help of which one can find out the mass of an unknown object so over here we consider the construction of the physical balance firstly as you can see the physical balance consists of a central beam the central beam is on which the entire thing is constructed from now this is the central beam which is fixed and tightened at both ends with the help of balancing screw now this balancing screw ensures that these pans on the table are not unequal they are at the same level and it also ensures that the central beam is straight and not unequal now consider these stirrups these stirrups are basically suspended from the knife edges k1 and k2 so if you consider these knife edges that are pointing in the upward direction from them the stirrups are supported and it is at these knife edges that the central beam is supported on either end now if you notice closely you will find there is another knife edge at the center of the central beam this knife edge is known as the central knife edge that is this particular object as you can clearly see the central knife edge points in the downward direction and in addition with the pan knife edges it is responsible for keeping the central beam in place now the pan knife edges are basically responsible for supporting these pans whereas the central knife edge is primarily responsible for supporting the central beam on the rod now as you can see this part is known as the central pillar the central pillar is basically a hollow pillar that is fitted over a rod now with the help of the central lever this central pillar can be lifted up and down so when we need to measure the mass of an object we simply raise the central lever so the two pans on either sides are raised upwards and this is possible because the central pillar is fitted over a particular rod the central pillar is hollow moving on we have the wooden board on which the entire arrangement is kept as you can see now this wooden board can be adjusted in its height with the help of leveling screw now this leveling screw is present on either end of the wooden board so with the help of the leveling screw the height of the wooden board from where it is kept can be adjusted 
further we have the beam support over here as you can see now the beam support is responsible for holding this entire part of the physical balance on the central pillar so that is the primary job of the beam support moving on we have what is known as the plumb line now the plumb line ensures that the entire setup of the physical balance is perfectly vertical in the horizontal plane or in other words it ensures the entire setup is balanced in the horizontal plane so when the plumb line which is suspended from a string from the beam support and has a small weight at its end is not moving and is perfectly vertical it implies that the entire arrangement is also vertical and balanced in the horizontal plane further we have a scale and pointer now if you look closely at the central pillar you will find that there is a knife edge now when the central lever is moved from its place what happens both the pans on either end of the central beam rise up and they swing for a while now when these pans are swinging it means that the knife edge will also oscillate from one point to another now when the oscillation of the knife edge is equal on both ends of the scale it means that the beam balance or the physical balance is balanced if the oscillation of the knife edge or the pointer is not equal on either end it will mean that the physical balance is not balanced and as i said we have two pans hanging from each of the stirrups it is on these pans that an object of unknown mass is kept and on the other pan known weights are kept in order to find out the mass of the object and both the pans are hung from scales which are fitted at the stirrups so this entire arrangement represents the physical balance with the help of which we can obtain the mass of an unknown object now usually and most commonly that is the physical balance is kept inside a casing like the one you can see now this is done in order to ensure that the physical balance is not disturbed by air currents or any other elements so it might often be that if the physical balance is not kept in a case due to some person using the physical balance it might be disturbed from its balanced position so in order to avoid that the physical balance is often kept inside a case so now let us find out how we can find out the mass of an unknown object initially what we do is we need to raise the central pillar from its bottom most position by shifting the central lever so in this animation you will find that the moment we move the central lever from one end to the other swinging of the pans take place now you can find out that this swinging is in tandem with the balance of the physical balance why because the movement of the knife edge is equal on both ends of the scale if this movement were not equal it would mean that the physical balance is not balanced now once the physical balance both the pans come to a stop we are ready to carry out our measurements so firstly what we do is we place the object whose mass we want to know on the left hand side pan once this object is kept on the left hand pan we introduce weights which we know on the right hand pan so we have introduced 20 10 10 40 g on the right hand pan and we raise the lever we find that the right hand pan is heavy when we take away 10 we find that the left hand pan becomes heavy on introducing 5 g we find that the entire physical balance becomes balanced or in other words the swinging of the central knife edge becomes equal and ultimately ceases so in the previous two cases where it was not balanced at 35 g on the right hand pan the physical balance becomes balanced and it is in this way that we calculate the mass of an object that is unknown to us